We are back for another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. Things are getting tightly bunched in the top half of the league table as teams jostle for position in match week 18. Our highlights spotlight beams squarely on leaders Cavalier, who are looking to get some distance on the chasing pack when they entertain seller team Lime Hall Academy in the first of our Sunday doubleheader. Check out the highlights. Early match, match week 18, Andrew Hayden the man in charge and Cavalier in their full white driving forward, real chance off the upright there from Russell, he, well, he didn't really have his finishing boots on today did Russell, a couple chances that he probably should have scored, that one was off the upright and then a shot blocked from Ainsworth, Russell would have another chance over the Calvin actually with the header and it was put wide, then this moment Christopher Ainsworth, so much space on the wide ear, went with the outside of the boot and Calvin with just a tap in there, right place at the right time for Cavalier's top goal scorer, his eighth of the season after just 22 minutes and that was pretty simple and yeah, not the best defending from a Lime Hall perspective and this is what they've been guilty of all season, just watching, being bystanders bystanders instead of getting in the right place to defend it and chasing towards their keeper instead of facing the other way. Cavalier would get into the box again and Russell looking to lob that over Williams but just couldn't get it right. Williams with an important hand and then Sewell over the top. They kept it respectable in the first half but then things started to happen for Cavalier more and more. This should have been finished. This was the first chance of the second half. Giovanni Lenk should have picked up an assist and Russell should have had his third of the season. Amazingly heading that into the ground and over. Then this moment, Jaheim Williams at his best. Ainsworth with a strike to the near post and Williams, two hands to it, pushing it over. That was a good save. Reflex is excellent and Ainsworth denied his third of the season. But Cavalier just kept coming. Pass outside to Irving. Irving dropping the shoulder, cutting in on the edge of the 18-yard box. And look at that for a strike. Richard King picking up the, picking up the assist. And a good first touch from, from Irving who did well. The first step excellent and then drilling that into the far corner. Bouncing awkwardly in front of Williams who couldn't get close to it. I thought it was inside of the boot but it was actually the outside of the boot from Irving. His second of the season and it was tuned into Cavalier at that point. Just six minutes later they would have their third. Chanel Thomas running through all the way into the roof of the net. Thomas coming on as a substitute. Basically, his first touch. Just look at the defense of Lime Hall, though. Just watching him run through, making no real attempt. And Thomas with six goals this season. A good return for Cavaliers number 17. They weren't finished. Two minutes later, Dwayne Atkinson would get through. Where was the Lime Hall defense? They were totally out of sorts. Open up his body well. Oh, no. Goes to the near post. Tricking goalkeeper Williams. Smart from Cavaliers number 10 who I think was desperate for a goal. He's only scored once this season. And now, an informed Dwayne Atkinson will always be danger for the opposition. His second, 4-0 for Cavalier, job done. There it is. Total domination in the fixtures for Cavalier. 16 shots, 7 on target for them. Nothing on target for Lime Hall and they only had two attempts. One yellow card each to Irving and Sewell respectively. Cavalier with majority of the corners, majority of the possession at 62%. And all of the goals, a big performance by the Premier League leaders. 4-0, they defeat Lime Hall. 
Dale Irving, you got a goal. I know you set some goals for yourself coming into the season in terms of goals and assists. How are you looking so far? Uh, I'm not looking bad thus far. Yeah, you know, you, you, you wore the captain's armband today. You're the leader of the team in this particular game. What does wearing the captain's armband mean to you? It means a lot to me. I, I you know this Cavalier team, you went to the final last year. You were a part of that team. You were unfortunately beaten by Mount Pleasant. Do you think that this is the season that you can get things right again and bring home yet another title for Cavalier? Definitely. All right, thank you very much. Um, best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you. So Cavalier made light work of Lime Hall following their 12th win of the campaign, while Lime Hall continued to find the going tough after suffering their 13th loss. We take a quick break on JPLN 30, much more right after this. JPL in 30. The second match of Sunday's doubleheader saw the resurgent Malayans United going up against a formidable Portmore side who are gunning for their 11th win of the campaign. Let's pick up the full match highlights. Started out to be a slow game for Stefan Duar as we look at the full match highlights would turn out to be a real heavy battle between these two. More lines in their full blue. Lovely strike from some distance from Wilson. Swerved at the last moment and was kept out by Williams. My lines always look dangerous when they're coming forward. Wilson with the strike just wide in the first half. Then Portmore, drilling that one towards the back for Stephen Young, who's so good in the air. Three goals in four games for Stephen Young. Couldn't get a on target. Clayton Peck, providing for Marshall. This is the best chance of the first half. Marshall to Barnett, and he should have finished that Stephen Barnett. I think he should have just gone with the head. The chest finish so much harder. And a chance missed for Portmore. He was one of it was going to be one of those days for them. And then this into the second half and Jason Wright intelligent run intelligent finish great ball from Enrique Gordon who picked up the assist and Wright had it six of the season 56 minutes down and Malign were one goal ahead it wouldn't stay for long first to the heaven to the heavens Portmore almost converting right away Stephen Young it came off the upright as well as the crossbar. They didn't clear properly. And then Stephen Young with a strike that was blocked by Harrison. And almost within that same play, this happened. Alex Marshall with the dink over the top. He saw the run of Jamar Morrison. And that was a beautiful finish by the Portmore number 15. Just redirecting the ball. A subtle touch. But enough to beat Harrison. Had the dive out, but was beaten Harrison. It was one all. After 59 minutes, Portmore right back into it. And then they took the advantage. They carried it. They took the fight to Malign. Stephen Barnett, eager to get his first goal of the season, determined to get past Odin Samuels. And that he did. The stronger of the two. Harrison, no chance. He was sprawled out on the ground and Barnett giving Portmore the 2 1 advantage and his first goal in a Portmore shirt. Gets the hook from his head coach, Peter Williams, Philip Williams. What he didn't know 
was that Malines had this kind of fight. This should have been another goal for Jason right there. He orchestrated the move, right? The pass from McPherson and then an intelligent by play with himself and Wilson, but just couldn't get it done. Then right providing that for Dennis, who had the strike on target, was well saved. Some real moments it were from it was from Malines. And then this again. Dennis into the box. It was a dive from Dennis. But Stefan Duar, he bought it. Blowing for a penalty. And Wright made no mistake. They should have had a penalty earlier. And Jason Wright calmly converting for 2-2. A smile on the face of Peter Higgins. A point for Malines. And Portmore will look at that as two points drop in their search to get on top of the table yet again. Eleven shots on target from a line. Six shots on target from a line from eleven attempts. Five on target for Portmore from eight. It was a busy second half for Malines United and a busy afternoon for Stefan Dua who had to show four yellow cards as there were 24 fouls in the piece. Four saves from Williams, three from Harrison and the majority of the possession for Portmore but it's all square after 90 minutes. Malines United 2, Portmore United 2. DJ Williams is with our man of the match, none other than the brace, the hero for Malines, Jason Wright. Yeah, today's man of the match, Jason Wright. You got two goals. I'm sure you're wishing you think you got three. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it's the ins and outs of the game. You know, you, you score some, you miss some. But um, the most important thing, we came away with a point um, against a very good team. I know you're a leader in this team here, the captain. and. Over the past couple of weeks, they've been significantly, they've been, there's been a significant improvement in the team's performances. I'm sure you're very proud of, proud of that. Yeah, definitely. I know, and all, a lot of credit goes to the, the coaching staff. Um, they have come and instilled a lot of discipline and structure to the group, and I know it's paying off. I know I have to ask you a personal question now. You have seven goals in the league now. Not too far off from the top score. Is that something that you have your eye on? A long season, man. Long season. We have many more games to go. Um, but definitely, um, it, it's, a, it's a joy to be on the score sheet. And I hope um, in coming weeks I can be on the score sheets again. All right, great performance today and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. So Portmore shared the points for a sixth time while Malines picked up their 16th point of the campaign. Much more still to come as we go to another break. Stay with us as Monday Night Football action comes your way. Welcome back to JPL in 30. We kick off our Monday football feast with Clarendon based side Beer United travelling to Kingston to face Waterhouse FC. Here are the full match highlights. Time highlights sunshine for this kickoff and Waterhouse had the strike early. Roger Williams able to hold on to that one. Dunson Coin with its corner kick, forcing a great save after Dane Murray got a foot to it. And Kemar Foster coming up trumps. The goal would come from this passage of play, headed back in the area, an attempted bicycle kick. Javi and Brian with a strike, Dallas there as well. And Rivaldo Mitchell getting the final touch. 
unbeaten goalkeeper Roger Williams the sole goal of the afternoon here's another look at it and Mitchell three goals in four games for the man who's come alive in the most recent fixtures for Waterhouse showing the quality that even from a youth was evident Rivaldo Mitchell with the goal in this matchup here he comes again and that shot spilled Fletcher was on hand literally second half action now Beckford with a strike Foster equal to the task Cohen two was denied by Foster and again Beckford would test Foster he had to go low to his right and part that one away here again strike from the substitute Harris saved by the keeper initially and he really had to dig deep to keep Waterhouse with the lead dying moments Lorenzo Lou in the substitute testing Foster at the depth they could have drowned Waterhouse but at it Hamilton was a lifeguard in hand to spear them blushes full-time stats seven shots on target from 11 attempts six from 13 for Waterhouse 26 fouls in this encounter two yellow cards Javier one for Waterhouse Fletcher with that handled attempt five offside three to Waterhouse 13 corners Waterhouse had four in a row in one instance they had nine of the 13 12 saves made a seven for Kemar Foster what a performance he had the majority of the possession with Veer but they have no goals Waterhouse with the sole goal in this encounter as we go to Chris Taylor Kemar on a night where Waterhouse were not at their best you certainly had to come up trumps for them how, how difficult a match was that for you yeah it was very difficult tonight as you see um, we're never functioning well um, in the midfield we think we give up too much space for um, Veer to play and they did play once they give them space to play they will hurt you but fortunate um, we come up with a clean sheet so some changes in the defensive midfield and the back line for you no Keith Simpson no Damian Bins and that kind of exposed you even more <laughs> Yes, you know, um, Binz is out on injury, um, Keithy as well, so the youngsters have to step up and, and I think Chris, Christopher did, did a well, a good, well good job today, so um, I have to congrats to him for his first game and I think he'll do a fair bit. You're not quite an old boy, but you might be an old boy in this unit. Um, <laughs> after being called upon so much in this kind of a match with so much stunning saves, uh, what kind of toll does that take on you and, and what's the recovery like? As a goalkeeper, <laughs> it's rough, you know, to be honest. It's rough. You have, you have to stay focused every time after a game like this, and you have to, the recovery has to be very, very good. Uh, ice bath, um, rest when you get the time to rest, and then you have to hit back the ground training as um, hard as possible. Would you rank this as the best performance of this season for you so far? Um, to be honest, yes. Um, it's quite the, 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 the great one I have so far. So I hope I have many more to come. Um, the season is long, so. I hope so. Congrats on your performance, Kemar. Get some rest. Enjoy that ass. Uh, Ice bath, you. and we'll see you next week. So, Waterhouse get their seventh win whilst condemning Beer United to their ninth loss. The second match of the doubleheader saw defending champions locking horns with the stars of the East Harbour View. Let's see how that one panned out. Christopher Mason set this one going. The late kickoff on the Monday Night Football. Early in the encounter, Joshua Anglin to Demar Rose to the back of the net. First goal of the encounter for Demar Rose, and what a pass that was from Joshua Anglin, showing his quality. Two minutes in, they would have broken the deadlock. Harbour View, good quality being shown. Composure from Demar Rose, certainly not one known for goal scoring exploits. But quality is quality. Shaquille Bradford darting forward. Got it to Guthrie. First time touch to Daniel Green. He fired first time. Saved initially, but into the business area. 
and Devonte Campbell after Shaquille Bradford had missed kick he was able to finish Devonte Campbell the number seven his second of the encounter of the season Devonte Campbell beaten at the near post they will come again Devonte Campbell in the thick of things going darting forward Akima Jones left behind and the penalty was converted coolly by Shaquille Bradford against his old team at the start of the transfer window he was a Harborview player but Waterhouse the parent the owner for him would have sent sold him to Mount Pleasant in the first half another ball across the Harborview line but it was handled by Salim Akala Devonte Campbell again darting down the byline and sent it across and Bradford at the end of that one but he was offside second half action now easily handled in the end after the danger was shown Devonte Campbell so many great moments for him releasing Makala and that one at the near post was uh, palmed away, was played away by Glenroy Samuel. Selena Kala trying the overhead kick there. And another attempt, courtesy of Kimoni Bailey. That went over the top. Christopher Mace not seen enough. Here, the full time match statistics. Have a view, only one shot on target from three attempts, four from six for Mount Pleasant. Some 25 fouls in this encounter, and it produced 10 yellow cards, six of them to Harbour View. No red cards, four offsides, three to Harbour View, one corner to Mount Pleasant, two saves made by Glenroy Samuel. Mount Pleasant with the lion's share of the possession, 53%, and the majority of goals, two to one in favor of Mount Pleasant. We stand by for the interview with the man of the match. Devonte back into the starting lineup with a goal, earning the team a penalty. How do you feel about your performance overall? Well, I feel I feel very proud um, from my performance. You know, I was I was away for a, a while. You know, and and to come back and get a goal and winning the penalty. You know, it's I couldn't ask for a, for a better start. Tell me about that experience as well. Not many local base players have necessarily had the opportunity to explore their trade in England at Charlton Athletic. Yourself, what was that trial like? Uh, well, it was it was it was a good opportunity, and I, I just I just knew that I had to go and 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 grab that opportunity with 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 both with both hands, and and I just went there and and did my best, you know. And t talk to me about playing in another culture. What was it like exploring football in England? Well, it was it's it's much different, you know. It, they they have better surfaces, and and you know the the they pass the ball a lot um, quicker. A, a lot faster, you know, so you, you, you have to be technically good because, you know, they, they, they mostly focus on, on technique, so you, you have to be technically good, yeah. And I'm sure they enjoyed your speed as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> All right, talk to me. You, you came off a little bit early as well. Um, how is the leg? How is the left leg? Not uh, a serious injury. Well I, well, I hope not, you know. We're just, we just going to um, go back and, and assess it and, and see what's, what's it. Being back into the starting lineup, I know that was a bit, a bit, a bit frustrating for you throughout the season. Um, how important is it you to get regular playing time in the starting eleven? Um, well, it's it's very important because I I, um, I know my quality and the, the coaches know my quality as well. So so you know the the more game time I I, I get, um, I can create more. I can I can help the team more, and I can hopefully get more goals and assists. Continue to enjoy your play, Devante. Rest up that left leg. We hope you return well for next week. Um, second goal of the season. Congrats again. All right, thanks. Devante Campbell there. Full results for match week 18. Cavalier beating Limehall 4 0. Two all draw between Malines and Portmore. One all between Treasure Beach and Dunby Holden. Tivoli Gardens a 2 0 over Humble Lion. A nil all between Montego Bay United and Arand Gardens. Waterhouse today beating Fear. United a goal to nil and Mount Pleasant, as you just witnessed, beating Harborview two goals to one. That's the roundup of matches in match week 18. Here's the table. After 18 matches played, Cavalier and Mount Pleasant, the top two teams, 
40 and 39 points respectively. Tivoli Gardens, Portmore, Arnett Gardens and Waterhouse round out the top six. 37 points all the way down to 26 for Waterhouse. Done beholden on 24 in Montego Bay. United on 23 ahead of Harborview and Veer, both on 19 points. Humble Lion and the Lions round out the safe places at the moment. 18 and 16 points and reg the relegation zone has the two new teams to the Premier League, Treasure Beach and Lime Hall, 8 and 7 points respectively. That's how we put a wrap on another edition of JPL in 30 on your home of Champion Sports Max. Tune in next week for more riveting football action.